For watching Alabama's WVUA News at 10. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tamika Alexander. We begin tonight with two big stories for you. Community leaders are coming together to fight gun violence. But in first in tonight's top story, Tuscaloosa County schools are set to switch from blocks to periods. WVUA's Travis Huda joins us now to tell us how parents can prepare their students for the big change. And Travis, what can these parents expect? Well, Tamika, school officials say the main change will come down to time management and how much these students need to devote to each class. But the main goal for administrators right now is making sure teachers are ready to properly educate county school children. Anytime you change, people worry about things. We want to answer the, all the questions that we can so people will be ready. And when school starts back in August, then everybody will feel comfortable and confident in what they're doing. Which is why Cassidy is pleased the Tuscaloosa County School Board passed this year's eight-period adapted course catalog months in advance. The next crucial step for administrators is training the teachers. They work with professional development needs for teachers to look at uh, how you do classroom management, adjustment of lesson plans, your scope and sequence for the year in terms of how they'll present the course material and help students be successful with that. Some of the tactics they are trying include not piling the workload on students or teachers. We're also looking at like testing schedules so they don't all have a test on Friday or for the teachers helping them with assignments so they don't have, you know, to 150 papers are great each night. The eight period day does have shortfalls. Incoming high school students now have to stay in school an extra semester if they originally planned on graduating a semester early. There'll be other opportunities for them with coursework and offer that we have, but uh, but that is one of the shortfalls. We will not be able to have an early graduation. Cassidy says change is an evolving process, and she doesn't expect a perfect transition. We're not under the delusion that it's just going to be perfect uh, when we start. We know that as we go along the way, there may be something that we didn't think about we should have. Uh, there'll be things we need to change and tweak. The county schools will make the adjustment fall semester. Students say another concern they have is the lack of time spent in more demanding classes, such as chemistry and some advanced placement subjects. County administrators are planning on pairing classes so students can spend the same amount of time in classes that require longer assignments. Tamika. In tonight's Crime Watch, the search continues for a suspect in the homicide in the Highlands investigation. A $5,000 reward is being offered for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the person who killed Kate Ragsdale. It's now been more than two weeks since the 73-year-old was found dead inside of her home. Today, Governor Robert Bentley announced the reward to encourage people to come forward and provide information that will bring Ragsdale's killer to justice. The Tuscaloosa Metro Homicide Unit has said that due to the horrific nature of the crime, the suspect would display tremendous behavioral changes, something that family or friends would notice. Here's another look at the profile of the suspect created by a retired FBI profiler. He believes the suspect may be young, lives near the crime scene, was able to walk to and from the crime scene, and is familiar with the area. The profile also says the suspect showed an extreme lack of criminal sophistication and will likely be showing extreme behavioral changes following the crime. But investigators stress no one should be excluded as a suspect because of what the profile says. If you have any information regarding the death of Kate Ragsdale, authorities encourage you to call Crime Stoppers at 205-752-STOP. New at 10 tonight, police are investigating a rape on a college campus. The University of North Alabama Police were notified by hospital officials while treating a female who claimed she was raped in her dorm room over the weekend. Campus Police Chief Bob Pacella said the woman had been assaulted by multiple men after one of them coaxed her into his dorm room. The student was taken to the hospital by friends following the assault. Authorities say two men have been arrested and are in custody and an arrest warrant is expected to be issued for a third suspect. The men have not been identified. The police chief says there is a possibility that more arrests could be made. Police say they're actively investigating and that witnesses are cooperating. WVUA is covering Lakeview, where State Representative John Merrill held a community meeting, giving residents the chance to speak out about their town. The main issue of the meeting is the annexation of Loves and Petro truck stops. Currently, the town, the two rather, are in the police jurisdiction of Woodstock, who collects the revenue. 
both Loves and Petro wrote letters saying they want to join the township. Residents say they have little to no revenue. The next step is sending the proposal to the House. Lakeview Council member Shannon Phillips says the town is growing and now they are needing to meet a higher demand. We have a lot of people and the schools are growing and, and like uh, Jerry Tingle said, the county commissioner, the coal mining, which is where a lot of the revenue comes from, is in our town, but I mean in our in our area of the northeast Tuscaloosa, but none of that money ever gets to us for the quality of life for our citizens. Also during the meeting, the town of Lake proposed an activity center. Residents say they do not have one in close distance. The next step is taking their plans to the Tuscaloosa County Commission and also Representative John Merrill announced plans for a traffic light off of exit 100 to help with congestion when coming into the town. Well, switching gears to the weather, let's get a first check on Alabama's home team forecast. We had a rainy Monday morning out there, but it turned out to be a beautiful afternoon. WVUA's Daniel Sparkman joins us now with a first check on our forecast. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Tamika, yeah, it was a rainy early part of the day, but then we saw a lot of sunshine by the afternoon. Here's a satellite and radar view of it. You can see that rain moved on out fairly quickly, leaving us with some nice conditions. Even some clear blue skies out there across parts of the area. We'll see that continue for several days ahead. I'll tell you just how many coming up in home team weather. Tamika. Now from Tuscaloosa to across the globe where preparations for electing the next Pope are underway. Roman Catholic Cardinals from around the world met today for the last time before they begin voting. Tomorrow, the 115 Cardinal electors will hold their first vote. If two-thirds of the conclave agrees they'll have a new Pope, more than one billion followers will be waiting on their decision. Well, this year is the 50th anniversary of the desegregation of the University of Alabama, and one Tuscaloosa woman wrote a book about her experiences in the 1960s as a, quote, outsider. WVUA's Emily Forrester sat down with Leela Quintero Weaver and has her story. Leela Quintero Weaver's family made a big move that changed her life during the civil rights era. My family immigrated from Argentina, so we were outsiders in the culture. Seeing the racial inequality in Alabama even brought Weaver to suppress her own culture. I didn't want to uh, speak Spanish anymore because it made us obvious outsiders and so I was all ashamed when my parents spoke Spanish in public. Weaver's book, Dark Room, a memoir in black and white, tells the stories of her childhood experiences through the civil rights movement. We had a different point of view from the average southerner and that time there were very few Hispanics in Alabama and so we were sort of not fitting in any particular category and that's not really that important if you're an adult but when you're a child and a teenager that that is a pretty big deal. And now in 2013 Weaver says there is still progress to be made. Things have come a long way but I still see racism all around. Weaver's goal with the book is to bring awareness to the fact that every individual has their own story to tell. Reporting in Tuscaloosa, Emily Forrester, WVUA News. If you would like to hear more about Weaver's story involving civil rights, she would be speaking at the University of Alabama in the AIME building Thursday at 5. Meanwhile, residents here in West Alabama are mourning the loss of a local civil rights icon. L.V. Hall passed away today. Hall participated in many marches across West Alabama, and he was very active in his church, First African Baptist, which was a meeting place during the civil rights movement. He also worked closely with the Benjamin Barnes Branch YMCA. In fact, each year he organized a fundraiser for the organization. Well, history has been made once again for the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma. The bridge is now on the National Register of Historic Places in America. In 1965, civil rights marchers were attacked by law enforcement officials as they crossed the renowned bridge. Known as Bloody Sunday, the attack contributed to the passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. The bridge was one of 13 new national historic landmarks, including a 400-year-old historic district showcasing the influence of Spanish culture in Puerto Rico, the home of author and abolitionist Harriet Beecher Stowe, and a historic stadium used by Negro League baseball teams in 20th century segregated America. 
Well, the debate of who has the best barbecue in the state of Alabama may soon be over, and you could play a part in the deciding factor. The Alabama Tourism Department is sponsoring a competition as part of its Year of Alabama Food. The competition is in brackets like the NCAA tournament with 32 restaurants participating. Some of the restaurants including Moe's Original Barbecue and Dreamland. WVUA stopped by both places in Tuscaloosa to see what makes it their barbecue the best. And we keep it simple, and I think that's what people like. We don't we don't try and uh, make it more than it is. You know, it's barbecue, and it's done really well, and that's what we like to stick to. Our guys get in every morning at seven o'clock, put a lot of love into the food. Um, everything's made from scratch: fresh vegetables, fresh meats. Um, it's just good stuff. And for restaurant voting in the final four that will take place on April 1st through the 5th. The winning restaurant will be announced on April 8th, which is the same day as the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. And for a shortcut to their Facebook page, just go to our website at WVUATV.com and click on Numbers and Links. Just look for Alabama Barbecue.